Hey, good morning, Lucky Fall Christian Church. It is Sunday, February the 6th, 2022, and we have just been through the big snowstorm, ice storm. We're coming out on the other side. I don't know about you, but I've been praising God because we're not out of electricity, we're not out of water, and we're able to get up and go to church today because Ed and Matt Rodebush went up and cleaned the parking lot and all the sidewalks off. So aren't we blessed today? The sun is shining, the ice is melting. It's a wonderful time to be alive. I'm just so grateful to God. Okay, we are... Um, First, I want to mention that uh, I talked to uh, Carla and Wayne uh, yesterday, and they said that it's cold down in Texas. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, I'm finding it really hard to feel sorry for them. But, uh, but anyway, we love them, and we will be glad when they come back home. And um, uh, I talked to Wanda yesterday and Wanda said that she's just tired of being in the house so we need to pray for little Wanda and I know she's she really wanted to come to church today but she said she just couldn't do that so remember Wanda and then I have a sweet family that I would like for you to please pray for and it's the Hargrove family in Prague Oklahoma and you know I lost one of my very very dear friends Jackie Hargrove and you know sometimes I reference her because she and I um we're such great friends, and we went through several things, you know, political issues and things at Gordon Cooper. She was on the board there with me when I was superintendent. Uh, I love her dearly. She is uh, she is dancing in heaven right now. There is no doubt in my mind. So pray for the Hargrove family because while they know she's in heaven, you know, it's just that loss, the sadness of losing someone like that. Our lesson is going to be about losing someone that is just a horrific loss. And that is the very last chapter of Matthew. We're in Matthew 28. We're gonna start the chapter. We're gonna talk about the ladies who go to the tomb of Jesus. We've had this horrific crucifixion. We've had Jesus laid in the tomb by Joseph of Arimathea. And uh, we've, had, uh, we've had the soldiers placed there sealing the tomb so that the disciples won't come and steal his body away and so here we are in Matthew 28 the last chapter of Matthew and it says in verse 1 after the Sabbath at the dawn of the first day of the week so of course that Sunday and you know guys when um, the first day of the week is that's the reason why Christians worship on the first day of the week instead of the Sabbath, which is how they worshiped on Saturday in the Old Testament. But, you know, Christians worship on Sunday because it's referred to in Scripture as the Lord's Day. And, you know, the Christians, the early Christians came together and they took communion and they laid, laid aside in store the things that they needed to give, the money that they needed to give to the church on the first day of the week. So that's the reason why we do that. And if we believe that the disciples, the, the, the apostles at that time, if they're inspired and the things that they do were inspired and directed by God, then we're going to do the same thing. So here we are. We're, it's after the Sabbath. And so it's on Saturday. It's the dawn of the first day of the week. It's dawn of Sunday. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Now, you know, if you read some of the other Gospels, they're going to tell you that Salome was also there. And, of course, Salome being the wife of Zebedee and the mother of James and John. So there's actually, you know, the more uh, versions that you read of the Gospels, sometimes the more information that you get. So I challenge you to read the Gospels uh, on the women going to the tomb. But so here we are. And Matthew has told us that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And, you know, here's in verse 2, it tells us there's a violent earthquake. Well, you know, there was a violent earthquake just a, three days ago when Jesus died on the cross. The earth shook. And then it says, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. 
Guys, this was a horrifically huge stone that covered the mouth of the tomb. And this angel from heaven came down and he went to the tomb and just rolled the stone away. And then he sat on top of it. His appearance was like lightning. Have you ever looked at lightning and you were so awestruck and so fearful, especially when it struck close to you and you thought, oh my goodness, that could have been me. And it's so bright, it hurts your eyes. And it says his clothing were, his clothes were white as snow. And you know, I'm looking out of the snow right now and his clothing, and it says right here, his clothing were that white. It says that his appearance was as bright, you know, like lightning looks like fire. And, and just think about how frightening that would be. And he's sitting up there on top of the stone. The guards who have been stationed here so that the disciples don't steal the body, they're so afraid of him that they shook and they became like dead men. Does that mean that they fainted? I don't know. Does it mean that, you know, sometimes when you get so afraid you just can't move you're just like you've heard people say before like for example if they see bigfoot i couldn't move i was stuck there i couldn't have run if i had to i'm just like in stone i don't know whether they fainted i suggest that they may have other um other things i've read have suggested that they fainted away but you know whether they did or not it said that they became like dead men oh my goodness you know so they can't move they're just stationary there or they're laying on the ground one or the other and then it says the angel said to the women don't be afraid for i know that you are looking for jesus who was crucified now isn't that interesting that he adds who was crucified because did you know that Jesus was a common name at that time? Did you know that in fact, you know, when uh, Bar Barabbas was released, instead of Jesus being released at Jesus' trial, that Barabbas' first name was Jesus? Jesus Barabbas. And so they didn't use that name because it'd be very, very confusing in the, in the Gospels to read about Jesus being released when in fact it was Barabbas, Jesus Barabbas. And then our other, our Jesus, our Savior, that went to the cross. So that's why he's saying, ladies, don't be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. And then it says, he is not here. This is in verse 6. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Now, it's interesting to me, the stone has been rolled away. It wasn't to let Jesus out. It was to let the people come in to make sure they saw that he was gone. Good morning, Carla and Wayne. I see you on there. Good morning from Texas. Well, good morning from Oklahoma. And I, I've already called you out about saying it was cold down there. So, <laughs> all right. Now, it says he has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. So Jesus told us, Jesus has been telling us, and I believe it's five times that he tells us in the New Testament that he's going to rise again. But do the disciples believe it? Well, it's kind of like seeing is believing, so they're just not quite there yet, but they're in a stupor. You know, so it says, come and see the place where he lay. Well, so the stones rolled away, the ladies can see, and then this is what the angel says to the ladies. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. He's going back to Galilee. He's going to meet them there. It says there you will see him. Now, I have told you, so you know, go back and tell them. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy and they ran to tell the disciples. Now, this is something that's interesting to me because when you study, you know, the society during biblical times, you all know, especially in the Old Testament and until Jesus came along, that women were definitely second-class citizens. They had no voice, they had no uh, education, they were to stay at home, they were to do the cooking and the cleaning, you know, 
the, uh, the stirring and the stitching and take care of the kids, and that's all they were good for. They had no voice. They couldn't talk to men. If they met a man out on the street, they couldn't say, hello, how you doing? They had to just keep walking. And you know, here we are. Here's women that were the first to go to the tomb, and here's women who are the first that are going to encounter Jesus Christ, the risen Christ. What an incredible thing. Now, the women were there at the cross, right? Where were the disciples? Well, we know John was there, but where were the rest of them? Hiding out. So we know that the women were at the tomb. We know that the women have come now to, to put spices on his body. And what they're going to do is they're going to try to cover up that smell of decay. So see, they're here. They've, they've heard Jesus say he's going to rise on the third day. But still, they're showing up with spices. You know, now I, I want to just point something out to you right there. You know, when uh, those people who still say, well, they came, the disciples came in God's body. You know, these women were always with the disciples. They, they were the ones that cooked for them and took care of them while they, you know, while they did the things they had to do to uh, prepare for uh, the church, the kingdom on this earth. Well, so they would have known that the, if the disciples had stolen the bodies, do you think the women would have gone and bought spices and brought them to the tomb? Of course not, because they expect to find him there. They expect to find a dead body in the tomb. So they have spices with them, and they're going to annoy him with these spices. Well, in fact, when they get there and the angels roll the stone away, and he's saying, you know, don't be afraid. He's saying... Uh, uh, he's risen from the dead. So go ahead, tell the disciples to go ahead into Galilee. And, and, and they'll, they're going to see him there. They're going to see him again. And it says, now, I have told you this. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with great joy. Can you imagine? They're looking in the tomb. It's opened up. The big stones rolled away. And they're seeing the gray cloths that are there that Jesus has been wrapped in. But he's not there. And what a rejoicing, what a time of rejoicing that would be. And then suddenly, you know, as they're, they're filled with joy and they're running to tell the disciples. And it says, suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him. They clasped his feet. They worshipped him. They have seen this man dead on the cross. And here he is saying, greetings. You know, it's just like we'd be saying, well, good morning. And then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. What an incredible story this is. And how fitting that Mary Magdalene and the other Marys were the first to receive the news of the risen Savior. Let me tell you something. If these women had to testify in court, did you know women couldn't testify in court because that, you know, their word was not good enough? You know, their word wasn't sound enough to be able to testify for something. But in fact, Jesus first came to these women. They had been there at the cross when he was laid in the tomb, and now they were the first two people in the world to know the joy of the resurrection. And in fact, you know, we're going to find in other gospels that it actually three women were there, and they're the first in the world to know the joy of the resurrection of Christ. Three things are very, very obvious, and I'm going to close on this. I'm out of time. But three things seem very obvious about this empty tomb, guys. The Marys and Salome. Of course, I've read this week that her name was Mary Salome. Surprise, surprise. So the Marys are urged to believe. The angel reminds them that the, of the promise that Jesus made. You know, the, and he confronts them with the empty tomb. And so he's saying to them, okay, here it is. Believe it. I'm showing it to you. Believe. And then the second thing they're urged to do is to share. The angel says, go tell. And this, uh, this is a command, guys. This is go tell what you saw. And then the third thing is he's, 
they are urged to rejoice. To rejoice. He's risen. He is a risen Savior. So, believe, go tell, and rejoice. And guys, I'll end on this. This is also for us. First, believe. When you believe and when you follow the path for your salvation and you hear and you believe and you repent and confess and you're baptized into Christ and you rise up out of that water, guys, go tell. Go tell the world about Jesus Christ because we are in a fallen world. We're in a sad and a dark world. And guys, we need Jesus in our world. Go tell the world about what Jesus has done for you and rejoice rejoice that he is our risen savior shouldn't we be compelled to do exactly what the angel told the ladies to do at the tomb of christ it's a timeless command guys i hope you have an awesome sunday i love you guys i hope that you enjoy the day and i hope that you get to get out you know most of us have a little bit of cabin fever right now so i'll talk to you later thank you for being with me today and carla and wayne down there in texas i hope it warms up for you or else you're gonna have to come home you know that talk to you later bye bye